Hello and welcome to a section with science. We are going to learn about what? About survival of species. In the previous lesson, we've learned survival of animals part 1. Today is a continuation of the previous lesson. Let's begin our lesson, survival of animals part 2. previous lesson we spoke about how animals actually protect their youngs which are the eggs so in this lesson we are going to learn further how different animals protect their young let's begin how animals protect their young for the survival of species animals have to protect themselves and take care of their young this helps them to prevent extinction so let's begin with the first species for the day which is birds now, in the previous lesson, you learned that birds actually lay eggs on tall trees. They actually make their own nests. Now, what are you going to learn further in today's lesson regarding the birds? Did you know that birds feed their young until they can fly to find food for themselves? So, this is how actually birds take care of their young. They feed their youngs. What do the birds usually eat? worms usually so let's see further about penguins now did you know children that penguins are also a class or a type or a species of bird so what is the difference between the penguin and other types of normal bird this is an example of a penguin like other birds a penguin will fight if anything approaches too close to its nest However, usually the adult birds are not threatened on the land. When they leave a chick unsupervised, the birds and mammals may attack. Penguins do not have many ways to protect themselves in the water other than by swimming fast. Penguins actually cannot fly, but when they swim, they swim so fast that it actually looks like they're flying in water. So penguins actually protect their young from other enemies on land better and in the sea by swimming fast. This is all about penguins. Now let's see further about the next type of animal. Crocodile. Crocodiles are the largest and most intelligent living reptiles. Now, the brain of the crocodile is actually one of the largest brain among all lizards. But do you know that the brain of the crocodile is actually only the size of a cigar? And how do they actually protect their youngs by having the brain in the size of the cigar? Let's have a look. Mother crocodiles guard their nests and protect their young until they are big enough to survive on their own or for two to three years. They teach their babies to swim. Crocodiles carry their babies around in their mouths to protect them from harm. Now, not only does the crocodile actually protect their young by teaching them how to swim and to survive in this ever-challenging world, they mainly carry their small little young in their mouth. This is the main way the crocodile actually protects their young even though they have a brain in the size of a cigar. Now, let me let you into a little secret about the crocodile. The crocodile actually swallows big rocks or small rocks so that they can actually sink deep into the water. Now, did you know that? These are kind of animals that actually swallow rocks. Let's see further. Let's see how the fish actually protect their youngs. Some fishes will keep their young in their mouths when the young are in danger. Once in the mouth, the eggs develop into young fish that remain there until they are ready to feed for themselves. Crocodile also keeps their young in their mouth. Fishes also keep their eggs and allow the eggs to hatch inside the mouth whenever they sense danger or enemy around which would like to attack their young. So this is about the fishes. Let's see further about another type of animal and the way they protect their young. A scorpion. Scorpions are eight-legged venomous invertebrates. 
Now what are actually invertebrates? Invertebrates are animals without backbone. So here they say that they are venomous. Now remember that scorpions actually do not bite. They sting. How do they sting? Have you seen a scorpion before children? What are the parts of a scorpion? The scorpion have got pincers right in front of them. A pair of pincers in fact. And they have got four pairs of legs and their body is actually segmented. Their tail which is long and elongated and it actually curves slightly and at the end of it they have a stinger. That is where how they sting enemies and they release venom into the body of the enemies. Now most of the scorpions are venomous and one sting from them can kill us. Scorpions glow when exposed to an ultraviolet light. Now this is something special about the scorpion. They have got some chemical substance on top of their body or the covering of their body which allows them to glow in the dark. The young scorpions are born two at a time, climbing onto their mother's back to be carried there until about two weeks. So what happens after these two weeks? Now this is a picture showing you how the young scorpions actually are on top of the mother's back. This is how the mothers protect the scorpion. So after the two weeks, these scorpions actually mature and they can survive by themselves. Now do you still remember the classes of animals children? Can you name me? The classes of animals that you know firstly we have mammals we have reptiles we have amphibians birds insects and so on so these are the main classes of animals now let's take the female mammal what is so special about them and how do they actually protect their young cows goats dogs rabbits cats and rats produce milk to feed their young. Most female mammals actually produce milk to feed their young. This is how their young get enough nutrition and they grow healthily and the parent is actually protecting their offspring. The female always take care of the young until the young are able to take care of themselves. Now these are features of mammals. Mammals are very living animals. Now what about other types of animals? Some animals have got the feature of attacking their enemies. They are actually big fighters. Now which kind of animal are they? Some animals like the hens, lions and tigers will attack other animals or humans which disturb their young. Now this is how hens, tigers and lions protect their young. Let's see further about the lioness. The life of a lioness isn't easy. Not only does she have her cubs to raise, but she and the other females do up to 90% of the hunting for the entire pride. So the lions, what do they actually do while the lioness are hunting? The lioness hunt and bring food for the whole pride. Lioness will usually have two to three cubs in a single litter. Now what do they actually mean? Once the lioness give birth, they give birth to two to three cubs only. And they will even let cubs from other or another female's litter suckle with that of her own. So, these lioness are not so selfish. They let other cubs which are given birth by other types of lioness feed or take their milk. So, this is how the lioness actually function while they are raising their youngs. So now you have an idea about the lioness and what the lion actually do. Now let's see further regarding the kangaroo. Kangaroos have powerful hind legs and short forelimbs. Now hind legs are the back legs and the short forelimbs are the legs or the arm like structure in front of the kangaroo. Kangaroos can travel at speeds up to 30 miles per hour and can leap some 30 feet. Now do you know that 30 feet is quite high? So this is how strong the hind legs are actually are for the kangaroos till they can actually hop to 30 feet. Kangaroos use their long tails for balancing. Kangaroos always carry their young in the porch in front of them to protect them. So this is the special feature of the kangaroo. An adult kangaroo always and always carries their young in the pouch in front of them to protect them. So wherever the adult kangaroo goes, the young also follows. Now this is about the kangaroo. Now some strong animals or large animals move in a large group. 
they are strong but they are never seen alone why is that so animals in herds now examples of them are actually elephants and buffaloes most elephants and buffaloes travel in a big herd elephants and buffaloes are strong and large animals but they stay in herds to protect their young from their enemy now animals like elephants and buffaloes stay in herd because they are easily attacked by other animals like the lion and tigers so once they are in a herd they have got strong large animals living together so it is much more difficult for animals like the lion or tiger or leopard in fact to attack them so when one of this elephant or one of the buffaloes go wandering away from the herd this is when the lion or the other predators take the chance to attack these animals now these are ways how animals actually protect their young let's move over to the section of exercise to see how much of today's lesson you have understood let's see question 1 question 1 How do crocodiles protect their young? A. Carrying their young on their back. B. Carrying their young in their mouth. C. Moving in herds. D. Keeping the young in the pouch. The only animal which keeps the young in the pouch are the kangaroos. Big and strong animals like elephant and buffaloes move in herds. So which is the correct answer, children? Is it A or is it B? Let's see the option and the correct answer. It's B carrying their young in their mouth. So do you remember what is the size of an adult crocodile's brain? It is the size of a cigar. They are so smart and they are one of the smartest reptile till they can protect their young by carrying them in their mouth. What is another example of animal which carries their young in the mouth? Those are the fishes. Question 2. Which animal below protect their young by attacking their enemies? A fish B kangaroo C tiger and lastly D cow Now which of the following option of answer is the correct one Which type of animals actually attack their enemies to protect their young Is it the fish or is it the tiger Let's see The correct answer is C tiger Now other than the tiger hen and lion also attack animals which are a threat to their young Let's see the last question for the day. Question 3. Question 3. Carry young on their back. Have the ability to glow in the dark. Can sting when sense danger. Which of the animal below have these features? A. Rabbit. B. Hen. C. Cats. And lastly D. Scorpions. So what do you think is the correct answer, children? Were you listening to the lesson carefully? I am sure that only one animal we came by which glows in the dark. Which one is it? Let's see the answer. The correct answer is D. Scorpions. So how long do they actually carry their young on their backs? For about two to three weeks. After that, the young scorpions mature and they can survive by their own. So this was about the exercise of the day, and I'm sure you answered everything correctly. Let's move over to see the vocabulary of the day. Attack, menyerang. Which kind of animals actually attack? Hen, tiger, and lion. Disturbed, diganggu. Now most of the animals actually do not attack their enemies if they are left alone only if they are disturbed so if their young are disturbed the parent will actually attack the enemy and sure we must be kind feed memberi makanan now which type of animal actually feed their young The very best example is obviously the birds. Herd kumpulan yang besar. Which two types of animals did you learn about which actually live in a big herd? The elephant and the buffaloes. Pouch kanto. 
The kangaroos keep their young in the pouch to protect their young from other enemies. That was the vocabulary of the day. Let's move forward and learn something interesting in the trivia segment. How do the Asian elephants differ? Asian elephants differ in several ways from their African relatives. They have smaller ears compared to African elephants. So African elephants actually have got large ears. Now what is the function of this large ear of the African elephants? Simple, they use these ear, ears, large ears to actually fan themselves. The Asian elephant is also much smaller in size. So the Asian elephant compared to the African one are smaller in size and have got smaller ears. They are now endangered in numbers between 38,000 to 51,000 wild individuals compared to more than 600,000 African elephants. So what I mean to say here is, if we do not take care of our Asian elephants, they would soon go into extinction. They can be greedy at times. They love durians and will roll the entire fruit, spikes and all, in mud, then swallow it whole. Now this was about the Asian elephant and how they differ compared to their African relatives. You have learned something new regarding the elephants. Remember that the elephants protect their young by living and traveling in herds. Now let's do a quick roundup or a quick summary regarding today's lesson. We have learned how animals, different ones, protect their young. Some of them carry their young on their back. Some of them keep their young in their mouth, like the crocodiles and the fishes. The ones that carry their young on the back are the scorpions. The ones that feed the young till they are old enough or mature enough to take care of themselves are the birds. Some of them attack other animals like the hen, tiger and lion and so on. So, I hope you can remember about today's lesson regarding survival of animals part 2. That is all for today students. I would see you in our next lesson what we are going to learn all about plants and how they survive. So till then, take care, have a nice day. Thank you for watching ITTV.